The versus meme. Is there anything more universal? You can use it in sports, tech reviews, lawn care. Today, we're going to be making our very own versus meme. Are you ready? Fight. All right, we're just going to hop right into Fusion. Go ahead and go up to your effects library. Go down to effects. Go ahead and grab a Fusion composition. Drag it on your timeline. It's really small on mine, so go ahead and delete all that empty space. Highlight your clip. Go ahead and go to Fusion. Open that bad boy up. In my media pool, all I have is a reference clip, and we're just going to copy this nice little battle scene here. I'm going to go ahead and drag it to my viewer so I can see it. I'm going to scrub through it till I find a position I like. That won't work. Give me a good reference. Now all we need to do is add in a few backgrounds, and we'll just start with this one. We'll grab in another one. Nope, I don't need those connected. Now here's the key. Here's the benefit of having a reference image. We can go ahead and we can just steal stuff straight from that. So go ahead and do a gradient. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in an extra point. Go ahead and click on the little icon. Go ahead and grab this dropper. And just grab some color, bloop. And one from center, bloop. And grab another one, bloop. All right, now we can look at that. We got a nice gradient going on. Change the center one a little bit. It's a little bit lighter, so let's do that. Now this gradient's going the wrong way, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this gradient. Grab this little marker at the end. I want the gradient going vertically. A little hard to grab, a little finicky. All right, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this other background. Let's go ahead and make it a gradient, drop in a mark, grab this. Look at how easy this is. Even Kaminari could do it. Here's the last one. There we go. Now if you watch my anime speed lines, you know I'm just about to drop in some fast noise. So go ahead, control space bar, bring in some fast noise. This fast noise, not the fast noise texture. Drop it in and we're gonna add in some speed lines. So go ahead and select your fast noise. We're going to crank up this detail quite a bit. Just max that out. Bring the contrast up a little bit. Let's move it to the viewer so we can see what's going on. We're gonna use this brightness. We're gonna crank that all the way down. Unlock the X and Y. We're gonna to wanna to bring that X scale down and crank that Y scale all the way up and bring down that X scale just a little bit more. There we go. Not too much, we still want some breaks in the lines. Just move your seethe around till you get a nice look and then move your seethe right up. Just a, just a hair right around 0.03, somewhere around there. That'll give us some motion. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hook that fast noise over top of our background. Now I got that going. We can go ahead and copy and paste that. Now we can go ahead and merge those two together. Now one's sitting over top of the other one. That's okay, because we're gonna mask it out. Go ahead and hit control space. Look for a triangle. Drop that in. We're gonna mask out part of this. Go ahead and put the mask in. And then we're just going to move it to where it needs to be. Control scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. So I changed it a bit. I kind of like this diagonal one, not this straight across. And we're gonna make this nice little center lightning line. That was one's pretty easy, so let's go ahead and grab in another background. Why this is highlighted, just grab this rectangle mask, and we're just gonna make it, make it somewhere about there. Then we can go ahead and grab the color picker, pick our color again, go ahead and overlay that over top. Uh, green is the foreground, this yellow is the background, so that's the correct way you want that. If you ever need to swap that, you can just hit Control T, switch which one is the foreground and background. We need to change the angle just a little bit. Around 28 degrees is about right. 29, that's looking about right. Let's go ahead and stretch it out. So now it's covered. And I want to add in a soft glow. So go ahead and highlight the background. Control space. Let's add in a soft glow. Now we got this nice glow around it. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and refit that to our image. Now you know it's lost its color a little bit. Let's go ahead and add in a color corrector for that. And then I'm just going to bring up the saturation. Got some saturation. You can even move in, go around and try and look for a nice color. Hue's a little bit off. That's looking pretty good. You can always go back to your background too. Click on that and just kind of fish around for a nice color in there. See what that looks like. Take that color compressor off. Yeah, that looks a little bit nicer. So either way, you can try and use the color corrector or you can just go back to your background, it might be a little bit easier. So now we've got that, now I need to add in some of these lightning lines. Now, if you've done any type of these lightning shifting effects before, you know you're gonna need a fast noise and you're gonna need a displace. Make sure you grab the right fast noise. Go ahead and drop in a displace. Just want this plain displace. Drop that in, fast noise will go into the top here. And we also need a background. We're gonna just steal this background, so. Control C, Control V, copy and paste it. 
we also need we just need a little lightning line so we're going to use this polygon grab that polygon and if you want i was just just grabbing this rectangle to the viewer so we can see where everything's at i'm going to delete that first point there and i'm just going to go back and forth so slightly make sure you go off the end quite a bit we can adjust it later but that's what we're going to use as our mask go ahead and plug that into our background and what we're going to do is go ahead and click the polygon line we're going to increase the border width up ever so slightly so we we'll am go to displace let's go ahead and change the offset let's bring this up so we can see it we'll change the displace to pretty high let's let's do this refraction strength that's where we start actually seeing movement around there we went kind of it distorted and we'll just we'll change these values till we get something that looks pretty nice that's not looking too bad let's go ahead and go to our fast noise we'll change our fast noise setting so bring up the detail and we'll change this contrast that's a little too far it's all over the place you just want it to slightly mess around with the detail that's pretty good we don't want it all in that direction let's put somewhere around there you can change the seethe a little bit make sure we have a seethe rate you want higher than most you want want it to move around a bit that's pretty high 0.3 snap be perfect we can go back to this polygon line and we can change this border width ever so slightly that looks pretty nice all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and merge this in to my other line i'm also going to duplicate it because i want i want one on either side merge those together and then i'm going to i'm going to add in a transform to either of these because i want to be able to move them around let's look at this so we have that we want this transform what we want to do with this transform over here we want to make one of these the opposite direction so we'll go 180 we can also just so they're not exactly the same change the seed if you really need them different you can go ahead and just change these polylines making additional tweaks and have something that's pretty cool and something i didn't do is add any soft glow so i'm going ahead and do that now i'm just going to copy this soft glow And I'm gonna go ahead and decrease this border width just ever so slightly. I want it really fine. 0.003 to 0 0.005. That's giving me some nice looking strands. All right, that looks pretty good. The last thing we need to do, we need to make the text. So I'm gonna to go to my template again. I'm gonna find in where that comes in. There's a few ways you can do it. You could just add your own text or you could copy this one. I'll show you how to copy it real quick. Zoom in on that. So we're just going to grab in some poly look masks. So I want a background, first of all, I'll grab this background. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make it a gradient and I'm gonna take the colors that I need. I'm gonna change these points. All right, use this polygon. Go ahead and start masking this out. All right, got the first one in. Now all we need to do is just add in another polygon. Go ahead and grab one. It in, it's going to automatically set these. If you click on your second polygon, it's automatically going to have those set to merge. Draw the second shape. You can see that my background colors are actually reversed. So I'm just going to swap them. Now to get that border, all we have to do is just copy and paste this over. We will merge these one over top of the other and then this one we'll just change to a single color and we'll just change it to white that outline all i need to do with that is change border width something subtle for the black go ahead and copy this first group move it over and what we're going to do is we're just going to move these lines a little bit move it out to where the black is and it doesn't have to be exact because it's going to be sitting underneath have i said yet how important it is to have a reference image it's really helpful and makes things really easy all right, so go ahead and merge this. With that, we need this to be the background and we need to change the color. So go ahead and just make it a single color, black. There we go. And we're gonna do the same thing like we did for these guys over here. Go ahead, make this single color, view it, border width. And there you go. If you ever need to change the coloring, just go back to your first one, scooch those in a little bit, change it, voila. Okay, now you can fill around with it and make it however you want. Another way you can do it, I'll just go ahead and show you. Quickly, I just want to show you another way you can do this. If you just want to make your own text, make it stand out a little bit, you can always use a 3D text. All you do is go in, choose your text. Now, this is very important in the inspector. Just make sure that you don't have anything else uh, selected. So what I like to do is I just like to hit one, two, make sure I have those both in the same viewer, and then turn one off. Because if you want to go and select 
your font. Scrolling through all these fonts is a sure way to make DaVinci Resolve crash, especially when you're in doing 3D objects. So make sure you just have one thing selected. You can go in and change your font style. I have one called Mighty Brush, just found online. Looks pretty cool. You take that, you'd grab your camera, just move your camera back, um, basically to grow or shrink your image, bring in a spotlight to shine on it. Make sure on your render settings, under lighting, you have lighting and shadows enabled, otherwise the spotlight won't do anything. And then I just render that out and you get this nice little look. I also added in a drop shadow, brings a nice little effect. And then for motion, you can either just keyframe your camera to move relative to your text, or you can just choose your text. In this case, I just changed the transform on my text. And that's another way you can do it, or you can just throw in your own text, choose your own font other than masking out like we did over here. However you wanna make it is fine. I thought I'd just throw that in there so you could see a few different options. So all you need to do is connect it down line here, out. Now if you want, you can always go on here and keyframe this go over first frame. Go ahead and go on this merge keyframe size and we'll say like frame, frame 20. Keyframe this size to make it big. Go back to frame one, hit zero, it's gonna pop up. I want it to bounce a little bit, so I'm gonna to go to spline. Make sure you have your merge, this one checked. And a little tip, I have this show only selected tool. Otherwise it'll show everything all your nodes and it's just kind of hard to find anything so make sure you have that selected under those three little dots there go ahead and hit that to zoom in i'm going to hit s to smooth and i'm going to add in a couple points i'm going to add in that i'm going to go up a little bit that i need to smooth those two points gives it a little bounce that's all right it's a little slow i'm going to go ahead and change it a little bit more bigger i can go ahead and just crank that up That's much nicer. So the other thing you need to do is bring in some PNGs or you can just bring in your own photo and you can use a polygon mask to mask it out and make your own PNG. I'll just grab these for demonstration and I transform both of them, move them to where you want them. That's pretty much it. You can add in some side animation. You could go ahead and keyframe that. Go ahead and keyframe the transform, keyframe that to where you want it. Go back to frame zero, move them off, keyframe them both. There you go, you made your versus meme. You can change this however you want. Thanks for watching. Have a great one, and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Am I using the wrong eye? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, this is gonna be terrible. I don't know if I can do it. The lulz face is gonna distract me. With all the dumb ideas that I've ever had. That's gotta be one of the dumbest. <laughs> How stupid is that? <laughs> we gotta do the intro. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> I swear I got enough sleep last night. That's really all we need for that. The rest will just be the tutorial. Alright, alright.